Hi everybody, and welcome to Where the Magic Happens, or as most people call it, my guest bathroom. You can lie on my feet if you want. Okay, good boy. That's a good spot for now. Good puppy. Yes. Today, we're going to be talking about how to develop film at home. There's more to developing film at home than just having a couple tanks and the chemistry. You need to have a space and a workflow, and most importantly, a space that's conducive to your workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I set this space up for film developing, and that'll give you some pointers on what you can do. First thing, we have a spare guest bathroom. Not everyone does. But for the first five years that I developed film at home, I only had one bathroom. So a lot of the tips and tricks that I'm going to show you here can be used if you only have one bathroom so that um, you can still use that bathroom and not just dedicate it to film like this bathroom has been dedicated to film. My entire film developing workflow is centered around the bathtub. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set, start off with the bathtub. I'm going to show you how I have everything set up so that you can understand why this is the most central part of the workflow and things you can do to make the developing part of it easiest. Now, the reason I use the bathtub is that it's very easy to contain all the chemicals, splashes and things like that can be easily washed away with the shower. And in general, bathtubs are meant to be easy to clean. So if you do get some developer or something like that, which you will 100% guaranteed when you pour it out in the bathtub, it's very easy to scrub it clean. Okay. Also, Hopefully you're not like food prepping in the bathtub or like using your toothbrush in your mouth and your bathtub at the same time. So keeping your chemicals in here and washing it well when you're done will also help reduce your exposure to it. If you let your chemistry sit in the bathtub after you've had a spill or poured it out, then you're going to have an issue with it seeping into the plastic and possibly if you taking take a hot bath, it coming back into that water. If you want to be very particular about your chemistry, if you only have one bathtub, most bathtubs are set next to the toilet. So it's really easy to take the chemistry from the bathtub and pour it out in the toilet when you're done with it. And that does a really even better job of making sure that you don't have exposure to your film chemistry. So let's work from the top down. These orange ropes right here are where we're going to hang the film once it's processed and ready to be uh, it's processed, it's washed, and it's going to be dried. This is where it's going to go. You're probably wondering what these chains are right here. These are paper clips with a couple of lead fishing weights, actually steel fishing weights. You don't want to use lead fishing weights because you don't want to risk them off gassing lead into your living space. So use steel or brass fishing weights. If you decide to go with a system like this one that I put together, what are those for? This is what the fishing weights are for. You bend the paper clips into a hook and you hold, put them into the film so that they let it stay taut while it dries, which really does a very good job of eliminating film curl in your home processing. Each of these two fishing weights is 1 16th of an ounce stainless steel. And it doesn't take very much weight because if you have an eighth of an ounce on each, you're actually going to have a quarter of an ounce holding the film down to make it so that it's taut and straight after it's dry. Okay, so that's a great system for 35 millimeter, right? I mean, they have sprocket holes. Not only can you put the weights in the bottom of the 35 millimeter, you can put paper clips up at the top of your rope here and hang the 35 millimeter. What about 120 and four by five? This is a hole punch that has a 1 16th of an inch puncher on the front of it. So that's, the size that you're going to need. Paper clips slide through here really easily, both the small ones and the large ones. So all you need to do then is to find a spot on your 120 that has no image data, punch a hole on each side, just like as though it had sprocket holes. And with the holes punched, you're just going to feed the weight like that, one on each side, because you want it to be evenly weighted on the bottom and then you're just going to let it hang dry. And that for 120 is going to work really well for four by five. Same thing. All you have to do is take an area in each corner on the diagonal and you're going to punch outside of the image area. So 
ideally where you have the um, frame from the dark slide or the film back rather. So you punch one on each corner diagonally and then you're going to feed one through the paper clip on the cord that's the rope that's for the drying and the other one at the bottom you're going to put one weight and that holds it very nicely and lets all of the water drip to that corner and then into your tub and you end up with a very clean negative. When you have these very straight negatives because you have weight at the bottom and they're hanging in a very, very straight line, the water sheets off of them more easily, leaving you with a higher quality finished product after drying. So I already showed you what the command, what these little cable ties are doing. We'll get back, we'll, they hold up this cord. I picked orange for my cords so that they'd be high visibility, but you could use anything strong enough to hold film from like 10 pound monofilament line, um, just some standard twine that you could get at Ikea when you're loading up furniture, whatever you want. I just wanted to be able to see very easily where the ropes were here. And what they do, the ropes, as we pan over, you can see stretch along the entire length of the tub. And you can hang the film across them. Now, the film will, to an extent, start to pool in the middle, as you can see here with the two sample rolls that I have up still, but it's not that bad. And the paper clips in this type of rope specifically tend to offer enough friction that the film doesn't really slide into itself. And as long as you keep it a little bit apart, you're not gonna have tons of issues with the film touching while it's still wet. But you'll notice that what I use to hold these in place are cable ties that are attached to the tub with command strips. I use just standard everyday wall command strips if you use your bathtub. You need to make sure you have the bathtub and tile command strips. Why did I use cable ties? There we go. So I used cable ties like this because if you only have one tub, all you have to do is undo one side, bring it over to the other side, and now your entire cord for drying is out of the way when you want to use your tub. And I put them inside of the tub here so that everything would be dripping into the tub basin itself, but also so that if we ever put a shower curtain up here, that these aren't in the way of the shower curtain. This is how I attach the film to hang it. It's just a paper clip, and I've bent it like this so that it can hold the film through either the sprocket hole or the little tiny punch hole that I've put into it. And these work really well. So if you were to pick up a box of 100 paper clips, uh, that's like a what, buck or two bucks at any of the office supply stores, you could make 50 pairs of the hanger and the hook. So that would give you a, a lot of film you could develop. If you develop exclusively 35 millimeter, that's 25 rolls at a time, same thing for 120. So what I did was I have this set up so that each one of these three different format ropes can do 10 pieces of film at a time. There are 10 pairs of hook and weight combinations for the four x five. And then there are 20 pairs each for the 120 and 35. Since the 35 and the 120 need two hooks and two weights, that's 10 rolls of film on each of those. So what that, what that let me do is inform my pinch point. Your pinch point is the, the lowest volume of stuff you can get through at one time. So, or bottleneck it's also called, where you have this large flow and it comes to a pinch and it can't all get through and you can only get a bit of it through. My pinch point or my bottleneck and film developing is the drying. Everything else that I want to do, I can do more of. But because I can only do those numbers of sheets or rolls for drying, everything else has to be adopted to this quantity. So let's talk about one of the most underrated but important pieces of darkroom equipment. This brown wire frame right here is just a standard shampoo and soap holder that you would find for any bathroom. I've used it now. This is the third apartment that I've had it in. It's absolutely fantastic. This particular one, I don't remember where I got it, can hold five tanks across here. 
which means with two shelves, it can hold 10 tanks. So there's 10 tanks of drying here. That's, that's a lot. That's way more tank drying than I have space to dry film with the paperclip system that I've put together. This is a, because this hangs from the pipe for the shower head, any water that's in here will drip down into the tub and you can easily clean it up. But by the time you put any tanks in here, they should have minimal chemicals left. You'll have rinsed them out. And most everything that's dripping off of this should just be pretty much clean water. Wouldn't drink it, but it should be clean enough that you don't have to worry about getting any kind of chemical action from it. So these three guys here are just a few little utility hooks. We've got a cleaner here that's good for cleaning tanks and the reels and the beakers especially. We'll see those in a minute. It's always a good idea to have something to make cuts with just in case you need it. And then this one right here is holding the rope that the um, hole punch is hanging off of. So this keeps everything convenient. When I'm working down by the tub, I can just reach up and grab any of these things if I need them. So here's the sink. Mandatory for this sink was that we had to be able to use it as hand washing. So there's nothing in here that can interfere with our ability to use this sink functionally. This is two gallons of distilled water. It's extremely useful for rinsing your film as a final rinse. Also mixing chemistry. It's particularly good for that because there is nothing in here that's going to contaminate your chemistry and make it function differently than it should. Distilled water is really good for that. It's also kind of spendy, more spendy than a two gallon Brita filter or other brand. It doesn't have to be Brita. The easiest thing to do here is find one of these at a garage sale or at a flea market or something like that. My last one was a garage sale find, but um, this one we got because we, we just moved here and have no idea where to find garage sales and flea markets. So anyway, Brita filter for two gallons. This will be excellent for mixing chemistry as well. This is just a mess, a catastrophe I haven't cleaned up yet. So because we don't use this for guests and because it's not a primary bathroom for us, the medicine cabinet is able to do other stuff. So what we have here is battery storage. These are the chargers down here for the different batteries, digital cameras, lights, things like that that we use. And here are the double A's and batteries themselves um, and other batteries. This works really well because it keeps them safe and protected and out of the way. Over here, we have some more hooks, hanging stuff, charging cables uh, for these chargers. We have bunches of chargers that use these same cables, but only two sockets. So we only need two of these cables. No reason to keep all of these excess cables for these things if we can only do two of them at a time. These are hanging on hooks, command strip hooks that we can just pull off, same thing here. These scissors were supposed to just have their own hook, like this. <sighs> Physics and gravity. So, oh well. Scissors are for cutting film when we load them in the dark bag, and of course the church key for opening up factory-made cassettes of film. So down here we have a shelf just for holding things. Typically what we'll do is we'll plug in the chargers right here and set the chargers on this shelf. Also a Sharpie, always a good thing to have out and accessible. You should have one of these in every camera bag or your camera bag, whichever you have, and accessible in your darkroom. They're great for writing notes on the cassettes, on pieces of tape, whatever you need to do so that you can leave yourself notes in the future. Leaving yourself notes in the future makes sure that you're going to do things well and correctly when it comes time to do them. All right, here's where things are gonna to start to get interesting. Top drawer, spare reels. No, this is not all of the reels, this is the spare ones. They just accumulate. People give them to you, you get them with lots of, with, with other camera lots, and hey, steel, steel reels are important and great. And it's important to have some off sizes, like 110 or 127. There's an 828, oh, right here, there's the 828. Um, for those rare times, you have a, a weird size of film to develop. Next thing we have, some spare measuring instruments. So I tend to prefer glass measuring instruments, but this is a really nice one that I need sometimes. It's 2,000 mils. And then we have three filter funnels. One thing about your filter funnels, that's probably not legible to anyone but me, 
but that one is marked fix, so we know that this funnel is going to be specifically for fixer. Chem plastic retains chemistry in it, so it's, you don't want to mix your fixer and your developer plastic because they'll interact with each other and break down the plastic over time relatively quickly. And this one right here is dedicated for fix. There's another one dedicated for developer. This one was dedicated for nothing. It's been used often for both fix and developer. And you can see how the plastic's turned yellow and it's, it's not as pliable, it's much stiffer than the other ones are, which indicates the plastic's breaking down. Last one, because it's on the bottom, paper towels for cleaning and some darkroom supplies for enlargers. I don't have an enlarger in the bathroom and we're not gonna have an enlarger in the apartment, but someday when we own a basement, uh, all that stuff's gonna be used. So it's, an, it's it, enlarger equipment I didn't want to try to have to find again. Bottom drawer is always good for stuff that's not Super important to have on hand all the time, unless you're my wife's height, then it's important to put the most important things in the bottom drawer. Took Basil on a six mile walk this morning so that maybe he'd sleep through filming. It's almost worked. Okay, so here we are under the sink and this is the primary storage area. So each of these shelves here, this picture is what the back of them look like. I command stripped the heck out of them because I didn't want any of the shelves to fall off. Command strips are so much cheaper than replacement steel tanks. Well, let's take a look at some of what we have down here. So we've got tanks along the wall here, tanks along the back. In the very back, you can see here we have more tanks. These are the biggest tanks and then the four by five. So this is rough. This is roughly arranged by how frequently I use the different sizes of tanks. And just to make storage more efficient, each tank is filled with reels as well. Here we have our D76 and Fix, and they're marked with the date that they were mixed, which is a really good idea. And the other thing that the Fix is marked with is how many reels it's been used for. So whether the Fix fails because it reaches the expiration of its mixed shelf life or because I've hit 60 rolls. Usually I go shorter than 60 rolls anyway. I'll know. We have the glass beakers, chemistry storage over here, things like that. There's a little shelving unit with some ex extra parts in the back. The glass beakers here are nested. This is the smallest of the beakers. It's a five milliliter beaker. This is used for measuring things like rodenol. This largest beaker right here is a 2000 milliliter. We also have masking tape and electrician's tape. The masking tape is vital because when you want, take your, you're going to use a Sharpie and you're going to write on it the type of film, the developer, the time, and then you're gonna take that masking tape that you wrote on and you're gonna stick it to a blank part of the film for roll film so that you can keep your developer information with the roll film when you put it into negative sleeves. The electrician's tape is important because whenever you film into this tank, you're gonna put a bead of electrician's tape around the outside of it so that it doesn't leak on your hands when you're doing your inversions. So this is a film washer. It's right now my temporary pinch point because it can only do 12 sheets of four by five or it can do um, six rolls or eight rolls rather of three uh, 35 millimeter or four rolls of 120 and washing them. It's a siphon washer by Gravity Works if you're curious. Very nice, very efficient. It's got this long tube on it and if you notice the shower head has been replaced with a hose uh, nipple. This connects right to the shower head, goes in the tub, and then the water, the rinse water just flushes right down the tub. So let's put this whole thing together, okay? When you're in the process of developing in your home lab, you've got your roll of film or however many rolls of film you're going to do at a time. Know your capacity. Know how many rolls of film you can actually manage and in a future video, we'll talk about staggering role developing and how to develop up to 10 tanks of film at a time, uh, 20 in a night if you're really, really ambitious. It's, it's tough, but we'll, we'll sh I'll sh tell you how to do that. Right here, uh, as you're developing your roll of film and you go through and you finish, and you go through each process, dumping out the developer and the washing and then fixing and then Re replacing the fix in the tank. After you've developed it, then you'll take your washer, whether you're just washing at the bathtub or um, 
spigot or whether you have an actual washing system. In, even some of the ones I've shown you in previous videos that you can build yourself work really well. After you've washed it, then you can take the parts of your film tank and put them up in the wire rack to dry. You've got your film reel. <clears throat> oh, and you'll notice behind me, I think, that there are a couple of soap holders, wire soap holders, perfect for holding caps. The shelves up here are perfect for holding your uh, empty beakers between uses so that they, they uh, are out of the way. At any rate, now you've got your developed, fixed, and rinsed roll of film. You can simply take it, put a couple of clips on the end as weights, hang it down here, or Clip the end up here to the um, hooks that you've got. Feed it off. When you get to the end, then hook the weights. Whatever works best for you. After you've hung up your roll of film to dry, you're going to take the masking tape off of your tank that tells you what your developing information is. And you're going to put it somewhere on your roll of film. Uh, that's just blank. but. You put it somewhere on your roll of film so that you can keep that information with it. Once all of your film is hanging, turn on your bathroom fan and let it sit overnight. Now, like I said, for the first five years that I developed film at home, I only had one bathroom. And that meant that if I developed film at night, which is when I did, in the morning I'd have to go in and then I'd need to shower before work. So if you develop your film at night, when you go in in the morning, especially after running the fan, it will be dry. Unless you live like in a rainforest maybe, but it should be dry. You'll be able then to roll it up to store it or put it into sleeves if you want um, at that point. You can then take your ropes, unhook it from one cable tie and go to the other cable tie and now you can move in and out of your uh, shower safely. If you want to put your film tank away right away, that's fine. If not, you can leave it there. It'll just re-dry out over the course of the day and put it away that night. Depends on how lazy or tidy you are, whether or not you're me, basically. And then everything else we have in here could also, if you're using just, if you just have one bathroom, could do double duty for holding your soap or your shampoo or something like that when you're not using it for developing or you could use these just to keep them out of the way so that they're your soap and shampoo aren't in the way when you're doing your developing down here. So whether you have one or two or 19 bathrooms, you can develop film at home. And just doing some clever things to make your developing setup modular or collapsible might be a better word, using easily undone cable ties so that you can move things out of the way taking your equipment and dedicating a space in storage for it. Now, if you don't have much and you only, want to, you only need to fill up one drawer, only fill up one drawer. Adapt your space to the amount of equipment you have. In all probability, you're not doing bulk developing events like I am on a, on a regular basis. So adapt it to the size of your need. Don't get too much equipment and don't have too little. Have the exact amount that you need. And if your whole workflow can be geared towards the amount of film you're going to use at one time so that everything is like a, a uniform pipeline and the same amount of work can go through it, you're going to have a very, very efficient workflow. So whatever tips from this you take and adapt to your own darkroom will hopefully help. Uh, there's been a lot of content in this video and a lot of it was pretty much a dry, different things point by point by point. But in the comments, let me know which of these different ideas for setup and storage and things like that you like the most and which ones you expected the least. That will help me as I make future videos and also let me know what part of these things are really working out pretty well for other people as well as for me. So give me a thumbs up if this video was helpful. You can like and subscribe with wherever YouTube's put that button when you're watching this video. Uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos on darkroom processing and techniques, how to make film washing solutions for cheap and things like that. And as always, thank you for watching and take great photos. Basil, 
Basil, I can't record. I cannot record if you're lying where I need to stand, Basil. That's my mark, not your... Sp okay, the good boy. Thank you, Basil. Thank you for getting up. Down into the tub. And you don't have to... Oh, Basil. What have I been feeding you? Oh. <coughs> oh, my goodness. Don't look at me like that. That was all you. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my goodness, Basil. I'm gonna have to turn the fan on and that's gonna sound horrible on this video. Yeah, just sleep. Okay, good boy. 12 sheets of four by five or, oh, Basil. <coughs> You're a good boy, but those farts. So when we put it all together, when you have your roll of film, I basil. Oh, good stretch. Good stretch. Yes, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. Stinky farts, but you're a good boy. Basil does not agree with that statement. Or he's snoring. I can't tell. Might be snoring. That's what you get when you walk six miles, Basil. Yeah, you're snoring. The new dog is a charged particle. We have to walk him about six miles almost every day to get him to be calm. And he has such separation anxiety that since Christmas Day, we actually haven't been able to leave him alone because he figured out how to get out of his cage, which is not an easy to escape cage. Open our doors inside the apartment and he got the deadbolt to the patio and we're on the fourth floor halfway unlocked. And he likes standing up on ledges and looking out the window. So I think he wanted to get onto the patio to look for us or stand on the balcony railing and look outside, which would have been really bad because he also doesn't have good balance just yet. So he's a great dog, but uh, I'm looking forward to the day when we can actually leave our apartment, both my wife and I at the same time. Yes, that'll be a nice day again, won't it, Basil? He's like 18 inches tall. Walking six miles for him would be like me walking, what, 24 or 36 miles, something like that. I'm glad to see he's sleeping. Not glad to see you're farting in your sleep though. Holy cow. Oh. Anyway. <coughs> anyway. Okay. Well, you woke yourself up with that fart, didn't you, Basil? Yeah, you did. <laughs> anyway.